I got a fever. And the only prescription is more OBS plugins. So let's check out some more OBS plugins. If you guys are new here, first of all, hi. Nice to meet you, cute face. Plugins are a really great way to extend the functionality of OBS beyond what you can normally do when you first install it. We've done, I think, three top five OBS plugin videos before. I'll leave a link to all three of those videos up here if you guys haven't watched it yet. We're gonna check out five more plugins that are really just gonna unlock OBS and allow you to build some really, really creative and advanced streams. Real quick, remember when I made jokes about how cool it would be if Elgato would sponsor my videos? So you get to work Elgato? That would be cool. This video is sponsored by Elgato and their Wave 1 microphone. This is Elgato's most affordable USB microphone that's just designed to be plug and play right into your PC. They work with Lewitt to design the microphone, which if you don't know, Lewitt is known for creating professional studio grade condenser microphones and the Wave 1 is no exception. But what really sets it apart is the Wavelink app, which works with the microphone so that you can mix your game audio, your music, sound effects, and control them all independently. You can even control what you hear and what your viewers hear completely separately. So if you want to listen to music, but not have that music go out to your viewers because you're afraid of getting like a DMCA or something, you can do that. If you want to pick up a Wave 1, affiliate links are down below. Thank you, Elgato, for giving me money. Whoa, Nutty, your shirt changed color of a sudden. Yeah, I know, it's like magic. Chris Angel, bitch. Have you ever wanted to record your gameplay and your camera completely separately so that you can go in and edit it for like a YouTube video later on. No? Okay, then skip to the next one. They can't all be winners. You might remember a couple months ago, I did a video showing you guys how to do just that. You know what? You probably don't remember because nobody watched it. The video was shit. Well, not even a week after I made that video, Exelgro released the Source Record plugin, which allows you to record individual scenes and individual sources along your main side recording. And what's really cool is you can record as many individual scenes and sources as you want, as long as your computer can handle it. This is a lot better than my version, which required like installing multiple versions of OBS and running them at the same time. And it, it, that just wasn't a good solution. But this is really cool if you stream and make YouTube videos because you could be streaming with all of your overlays and all of your alerts. Meanwhile, in the background, you could be recording your full 1080p 60 gameplay completely clean as well as your camera so that you can go and edit them separately just for the YouTube video. So if you want to set this up, you just installed this source record plugin. I'll leave a link down below for that plugin as well as all the other plugins that we're going to cover in this video. Then just go into any scene or source that you want to record, right click on it and go into filters. You're going to add a source record filter and you should see this property window. This is where you set up all of your settings for your recording. You're probably familiar with most of these settings, but what's most important is the record mode. This is basically telling OBS when it should start a recording. So for example, if you set it to streaming, then every time you start streaming, it's going to start a separate recording. Should be pretty intuitive. There's even an option for starting a recording every time you start your virtual camera. And there's an option to always record. I don't know why anyone would want to use that, but it's there. But yeah, you just rinse and repeat for all the scenes and sources that you want to have recordings for. Keep in mind if you're using NVENC that all consumer GPUs are limited to three NVENC sessions, which means you can only have three NVENC recordings going at the same time. The next one is called Gradient Source. So this one allows you to add a new type of source to OBS called a Gradient, and it does pretty much exactly what it sounds like it does. It's just a normal rectangle that's colored with a two color gradient. In case you don't know, OBS has a type of source called a color source, which is really just a rectangle that's whatever color you want. This is the same thing, but it lets you pick two colors instead of one. I really wish I could make this sound more exciting, but that's literally all it does. I'm gonna be straight with you. I just added this in to pad out the list, but you know me, I'm all about creativity and some of the simplest features in OBS can be used in really creative ways. Here's a couple examples. I like to right click and add a gradient source and for both colors, I select a black, but for the first one, I drag the opacity all the way down to zero so that one side is completely transparent and the other one is completely black. Then I add some rotation and then adjust the size so it's this really long gradient source and just align it to the bottom of my canvas. And then now I just have this really nice sleek, subtle shadow behind my overlay, 
which just makes the text a lot easier to read and it just looks a lot nicer. By the way, I know a lot of you guys are gonna ask how I got the scrolling chat widget with the time and all of the metrics. I did a whole video on that, link is up here in the corner. Another thing you could do is to recreate the animated webcam border that I covered up in this video. And gradient sources make it really easy to do all of that all within OBS. So all you do is you add a gradient source, you select the two colors that you want, and then you can just add a mask to cut out the webcam border in whatever shape that you want. And then you can add a custom shader to rotate your gradient source and just have it loop forever. If you don't know what shaders are, I covered that in this video. There's gonna be a lot of videos up here, so just, just watch all of them. They're all really useful. The point is, I know that the gradient source plugin is really basic, but if you can get creative with it, I'm sure there's something really cool that you guys can come up with. The next plugin is called Source Doc, and this one allows you to take any source, your gameplay, your webcam, or even entire scenes, and add it as a dock with a little preview window so you can see that source. This is really useful for monitoring sources like your webcam, even if you're on a scene that doesn't contain your webcam. So let me show you how it works. If you go into tools and then source docs, you'll see this window. Over on the left, you'll see a drop down box with a list of all your sources and scenes. You just select one that you want to monitor, you give it a name, and then you click add. This is going to create a dockable window, which you can then pin anywhere you want in OBS. By default, you'll see a preview of the source and depending on what type of source it is you'll even see a volume meter and media controls so that you can control the audio levels and playback for that source. Now you can control which of these elements gets shown in the window. So if you go back into your source doc window, you can select on the check boxes. So if you don't want to see your media controls, you can just uncheck that to get rid of it. So this is a really cool plugin. However, I'm using an unreleased version of source doc, which has a really cool feature that I'm personally pretty proud of because I'm the one that suggested it. Nobody cares. If you select a scene in the source list, you'll actually be able to see all of the different sources that are contained within that scene, and you'll even be able to control the visibility of those sources. This feature is incredibly useful if you use a lot of nested scenes. Again, if you guys don't know what nested scenes are, I talk about it in another video, go look at it up here. There's gonna be a million videos here by this point. One classic example for me is I have a six camera setup not a flex, I just have no life. And so instead of just adding all six of my cameras to all of my different scenes, what I can do is I can add all of my cameras into its own dedicated scene. And then anywhere where I wanna use my cameras, instead of adding all those cameras, I just add that camera scene. Now this is really useful because if I ever wanna switch cameras, then all I need to do is toggle the camera I want inside of that nested camera scene. The only problem is I would need a device like a Stream Deck or Touch Portal in order to toggle the sources inside of that scene. But with Source Doc, that's no longer necessary because all I need to do is create a Source Doc of my camera scene. And now, no matter what scene I'm on inside of OBS, I always have access to all of my cameras inside of that camera nested scene. Now, if you're wondering how I'm toggling all of my cameras on and off as if they're radio buttons, it's called Source Toggler. Again, link up here for that video. I really hope that becomes an official feature soon. By the time you're watching this video, it may already be an official feature. I would also like to see quick access to like filters and properties for sources. I think that would be really cool. But overall, super useful plugin. The next one is one that I slept on. I slept on this one like a baby. This one is called Advanced Scene Switcher and it is just absolutely loaded with features. It basically allows you to set up a whole bunch of conditions that when the conditions are met, OBS will automatically change scenes. For example, you can set it up so that every time you click on a different application inside of Windows, it can switch to a predetermined scene that you've set up inside of OBS. Or maybe you can switch scenes when your mouse moves to a certain region of your monitor, or maybe have your scenes switch automatically on a cycle. You can even make it change scenes when an audio source in OBS reaches a certain threshold. I can see that being really useful if you're like in a Discord call with someone, you can set it up so that whenever you're talking, it will automatically switch to your scene. And then whenever your guest starts talking, it automatically switches to their scene. It's super robust. Honestly, there's so many features of Advanced Scene Switcher that I'm not going to be able to cover it here. It probably deserves its own dedicated video. So if you want to see that, good luck with that. But the reason why I slept on this plugin was because I thought it was just about scene switching, but it turns out you can actually do way more than that. 
A couple months ago, they added a macro tab, which allows you to set up conditionals, but you can run things like toggle sources on and off, toggle filters, change filter settings, hotkeys, even run programs. It's really incredible the amount of things that you can run just from the macro tab. I'm not even gonna show you guys too much more because well, frankly, I'm very lazy, but just install it, play around with it. When you install it, you're gonna be like, oh wow. Oh wow. Finally, the last plugin is called Source Copy. Now, before I tell you what this one does, can we get some more creative names? Four out of the five plugins have involved the word source in it. If you're like neck deep in OBS, this one might be really useful for you. Essentially, it allows you to copy scenes, sources, filters, but it offers a few more extra features than the ones built into OBS. For example, you can copy sources in between scene collections. So if there's only one particular scene that you wanna move over to another scene collection, you can just copy that one, go to your new scene collection, and then paste it there. All of the sources within that scene, all of the filters, even other nested scenes, they'll all be copied over. And if you wanted to, you can drill down to the source level and just copy individual sources, or you can even drill down even further and just copy individual filters. And what's even better is that you can export individual scenes or individual sources as JSON files, which you can then import into other scene collections or into another install of OBS, or even into the same scene collection. I think this is really useful for like creating a preset. So for example, my microphone has a bunch of different filters so I can copy all of the filters for my microphone save that as a preset so now if I ever get a new microphone to add to my setup I can quickly import all of those filters instead of having to individually add them one by one might be a little bit difficult to understand why this would be useful but if you're like me and you're like your, your soul's like infused in OBS you know it immediately why you need this anyway that's been it guys leave a comment down below doesn't matter what you put, just do it. I'm just trying to increase engagement in this video. Also, make sure to join the Discord. That's called a call to action, so you better do it. And finally, most importantly, go follow me on Twitch. I stream three nights a week, and I better see you there. I'm watching you, okay? You better be there, okay? Okay, bud? <laughs>